Hello everybody, welcome back to KDP A to Z. Today I'd like to share with you my top tools for making activity books for kids. Now you can see here that there is a number of really good sellers. You can see their best sellers ranks here at the top. And you can see that these have been independently published. So people like you and I who are making our own books it is possible to do and you can make a good profit making them. Now I have made some other videos about how to make specific activity book pages. So do take a look at those if you want a bit more detail on these some of these tools. So tool number one, manuscript templates for KDP. Now, the first thing I do when I'm publishing any book at all is I make sure that I set out my document correctly. And my tools and resources for this is just basically on the KDP platform. So the first thing that I like to do is go to tools and resources. We go to manuscript formatting resources. We scroll down the page to this section here, manuscript templates. You could just search for manuscript templates if you like, then choose a template, and then we're going to download them. I'm going to download them with the sample content so you can see why that this is so important. So here we go. We've got the templates all here. I'm going to select English, and then you can select any size book that you like. Now for kids activity books, they do generally tend to be about A4 size. So that's letter paper size. So we normally go for the 8.25 by 11 inch. So here we go. This is the sample content. And then you can edit this and save it onto your computer as much as you want. So um, this sample content is quite good because this will be your very first page and it shows you how to lay out your book. Now, the reason that I like to always use this particular format is because this will take into account the binding area of your book. So you'll notice here that the writing on this page is inset into the page slightly more than it is on this one. And again, here, you'll see that the indent here is a bit larger. It's not very easy to see and it is subtle, but if you don't have this particular layout for your book, what will happen is your pages will look a little skewed when it's actually bound. So I always make sure that I go into the right format. Now, the next thing that I like to do, depending on the age range of the child that I'm focusing on, I like to try and find out what sort of things they're learning about at school. So that it'll tie in nicely with their sort of age range. So a really good one that I use for this is called IXL. Now, this is actually an educational website, but I find it really useful for finding out what that age group is learning about and what sort of things they're capable of doing, because you don't want to set something outside of their range or something that's too easy for them. This is a UK based website, but I have got a handy little guide here of what it is equivalent to in other countries. So you can see here, age four to five would be a reception child in a America, that would be classes preschool, Australia, kindergarten, and so on. So do feel free to take a screenshot of this page. You might find it useful. Now on this website, say I am looking for a child of about five to six years old. I'm going to be going with a year one child, according to this table. So for year ones, what are they doing? They're adding and subtracting, they're naming shapes, they're sounding out words, they're trying to do sight words and then it goes into a bit more detail here. So there's 295 skills that they have to learn, apparently. So they're doing a little bit about halves, quarters. So not more detailed than that. You can see here as well, they're learning to count up to 10, learning about measurement names such as wider and taller, narrower, and they're learning a little bit about money. So these are some really good ideas here of things that you might be able to incorporate into your activity books. Now, if you click onto any of these, feel free to use it to get ideas, but just bear in mind that this is not allowed for commercial use. You cannot copy any of these and use it in any of your books. This is just for ideas and to get a good grasp of what these children might be learning about at school. If you are enjoying this video, I'd really appreciate it if you press the like button and feel free to subscribe to my channel as I post regular content on all things KDP. So tool number two is IXL. I'm going to put a link in the description to all of these websites. So don't worry about taking the names down. The next thing that I like to do is get loads of good images that I can put into the book. I try to keep them so that they are very similar to each other. So I like to go with a certain style. I don't like to mix too much. It's quite 
important to remain quite uniform in the book. Now, my top sites for getting free images are Pixabay. And this one's because you don't have to attribute it at all. And they are really good images. And the other one would be Vecteezy. I do find Vecteezy slightly better, but the only problem is you do have to attribute the artist with this website. But this one seems to have better images um, and more consistent in their style. So my tools three and four are Pixabay and Vecteezy. Now, if you're finding those websites slightly limited, my tool five is for you. It's Creative Fabrica. Now, this is a subscription based website, um, but it has absolutely loads in it. So if I was looking for a space icon here, I've got 23,000 graphics to choose from, as opposed to just one and a half thousand on Pixabay and on Vecteezy, slightly more, but then you do have that problem of attribution. So with Creative Fabrica, you don't have to attribute anybody. Now, 23,000 does sound like an awful lot, but bear in mind that is going to sort of be everything that uh, you might want. And that's, that's for space icon. If I was to just put in for space, looking at 182,000 graphics, which is ridiculous. But it does give you some nice bundles as well on this one, which is what I like because I do like to keep my designs consistent. And that's what you'll find with these bundles. So I quite like this one. There's some nice graphics that I can just pop in next to the actual activities in the book. So I'm going to download that one. Now, the other thing that I love about Creative Fabrica is that if you have a bit of a dig around, so for example, I've put in space activity pages, you can find loads of really good ready-made things that are already done for you. So for example, you, we've got here some coloring pages, We've got some counting activities that are space activity based. We've got some word searches. We've got some mazes. We've got something like the scissors skills, which is another nice activity for a five to six year old. It's already done for you. You don't have to do any extra work. You can just slot that into your book. There's really loads and loads on this website. It is a monthly subscription or you can pay annually, but honestly, you can't go wrong with this subscription. The only thing that I would say about it is please don't just take a whole book from off here and publish it as is. Make it your own because otherwise you are going to get done for copyright infringement. Someone else might have done that already. The next thing I like to do with my activity books is laying out the pages. And I do like to use a design program for this. So there's a couple of different ones you can use. I personally like Adobe Illustrator, but InDesign is very similar to that. The other thing that you could do is use Canva, which is a free online tool. And the reason that I do pay for an actual design program, such as Adobe Illustrator, is I do find there's a few issues with Canva. Um, for example, on this one, if I've got the page and I've uploaded it onto the Canva paperwork, there's no way in the free version, certainly, I'm not sure about the paid one because I haven't paid for it, um, but there's no way that you can ungroup these images. So that page is how it is. So that's the, one of the reasons I go with an actual paid program. But of course, the choice is yours. Now with Adobe Illustrator, of course, it is much easier to do that. You can just select the individual pieces. Everything is ungrouped. You can move things around as much as you want. You can select more. It's just, I just generally find Adobe Illustrator much easier and there are more restrictions, it seems, with Canva. But Canva definitely does has, have its uses. It is really good free program. I just find Adobe Illustrator slightly more beneficial. So for example, I could just delete this, these bits and pieces, I can move these bits around far easier than I would do with Canva. Tool seven is a program called WordMint. Now this is not a free program, but it is just a one-off payment. And I don't think it was more than 10 pounds when I bought it. So um, what you can do with it, you can make different puzzles by yourself. So you can make word searches, crosswords, word scrambles, uh, bingo cards, matching worksheets, etc. So there's loads of really good little puzzles that you can make here whichever you decide. So for example, I've used it for things like word scrambles. I've just put in my list of words and it scrambled them for me randomly so that I know that every letter is in there um, because it wasn't one that I trusted myself to do. 
So it's not very expensive and it's a really good program. I would thoroughly recommend it. Tool number eight is this one called I Am Toolbox. It is a very good program. It is a bit, a little bit basic, but it does have several areas that you can have a little look at. Uh, for example, it's got the mandala creator and all you have to do is just draw all over it and it'll randomly make you a mandala pattern, which is nice. Um, so you can use this, it's completely free. I believe it's all allowed to be used commercially. There's certainly Amazon sections on it. My favorite part though is this picture dot to dot, which I have shown you in another video of exactly how to use this. It's and they can be used commercially and completely free. I'll leave the link in the description. Tool number nine. Again, I have shown you this in another video. This is PBN IFI website. Um, this was the one that you can make color by numbers. Again, it's completely free and I'll leave the link in the description. And finally, for those of you who are not quite so artistically minded like myself, um, getting the actual book cover design is the most crucial part of making your book. There's no point in having great content if your book cover does not sell it. So I will usually use Fiverr for my book covers. That is because these are professionals that are making the book covers and I am good at the content. I'm great at the formatting and everything else, but the book cover, the artistry of it and the catching the person's eye is a little bit beyond me. They are usually very cheap, uh, $5 for most projects. In the UK, that's around £4.34 at the moment. So these are far superior to what I could create myself and they're much more eye catching. So um, it is something I would spend money on usually if you've made a great book which of course you will have done. The other good thing about getting a designer to do it is you just tell them how many pages there are and they will get the right size for you. So, um, so it's like far easier than yourself formatting the size correctly. As you can imagine, there is a lot of designers on here since so the competition is high and it drops the price a little bit. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more information on creating your own work for self-publishing on KDP. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.